We don't have a shortage of toilet paper like you do in the U.S., but we have a shortage of uh, yeast packets for baking, like constantly bread. No yeast. Yeah, yeast, bread, pasta, all that stuff. Anna Savino is an American raising a family in the north of Italy with her Italian husband. I've taken my kids down in the garage down underneath our apartment building and just made them like just run for like 10 minutes because it's, it, it's just getting tough. Today, on the first installment of Ahead of the Curve, she'll tell us about life in Italy as the crisis peaked. So we're not supposed to go outside unless we need to, but on the other hand, all the factories were open. Hello, I'm Brooke Silva Braga coming to you from my front yard in Queens, New York. And if you're watching the video version of this, you can see the kids have been digging. Uh, but before we get to this uh, chat with Anna, I wanted to, because this is the first episode, just kind of explain what we're trying to do here. Uh, the idea is we're gonna speak to people in countries that have been dealing with coronavirus longer than we have here in the US. So that means China, Italy, uh, South Korea, Taiwan, there are a few other places. And a lot of these are actually conversations uh, we've already recorded because the idea is we'll hear from them, we'll run the episode, when they're in the same stage that we are here now. Uh, and there's a, kind of a few ways to measure this. Broadly, we're gonna go with when a country had uh, 100 cases. So for the US, uh, that would put us at the start of week six, uh, kind of in this journey. Italy is about two weeks ahead of us. So they were uh, where we are roughly on March 22nd. And that's when uh, Anna and I, sequestered ourselves in rooms in our houses. Our spouses tried to watch our kids and we attempted to talk about what they're dealing with there. Thank you for, for trying to do this. Oh yeah, no problem. Um, oh, so first thing, like where are you in Italy? So we are in the northern part of Italy. It's the northwest corner. Um, so we're about two and a half hours from Milan by car. And what are the rules for you now? So, um, yeah, it's been a gradual kind of um, process. It's getting more and more restricted. And the kids have been out of school for about a month now. A month, okay. Yeah, and uh, they were supposed to go back on April 3rd. But now that they're saying they can't make that happen because numbers keep getting worse. And so they're prolonging that till who knows when. So, you know, restaurants are closing. Anything that's not a necessity is being closed. How uh, long have restaurants been closed? Or are some still open? Um, just for delivery. Um, okay. And that's a choice. So probably two weeks. And people are arguing that, um, you know, the schools were closed, restaurants were closed. Um, in my town, my town seems to be a, a, a strict town because our, of our mayor making in his own choices. But like we've had all of our gardens and parks closed for a month too, as soon as they shut down the schools. Um, but so you can't you can't go to the park. No, and as of now, we can't go outside more than two hundred meters outside of our house. Wow, how long has that been? Um, well, it's kind of like a how people interpret things, I guess you'd say. But last night, the president, he came on and he said they were finally shutting down factories. And there was this big controversy factories. about if people could go and run outside, not close to other people. Um, okay. And this was kind of like a gray area where people were not supposed, for the last two weeks, um, so, or since all of Italy's been on lockdown, um, the only reasons we can go outside are to go to the supermarket or a pharmacy or to get food or to check up on a loved one, like your parent, elderly parents, but you have to have a little certificate that you print out really from home. And it's a like justification. So you have to write why you're out, the date, blah, blah, blah. And then there's um, the Vigili, which are like our community police. And they walk around and they'll stop you and check you and ask you, if you're driving, they'll stop you and ask you why you're out and you have to have this piece of paper. Otherwise, it's like a criminal offense, basically. Have you seen the police out? Yeah, oh yeah, they're out. You've seen and them. They're, and they're stopping people all the time. What's the penalty? Uh, that's a good question, but it's pretty bad. And, and does that mean people there are taking it seriously or does it mean people didn't take it seriously so they had to come up with these draconian rules? 
Uh, a little of both. I mean, you hear, it, it's hard to know because we are not outside of our house. It, we haven't been out in two weeks. So you just, you know, you, you look out of your balcony and just to me where I am, it's very, very quiet. There's nobody out. Um, just people with, ma if you go out, you have to have your mask on with gloves. Um, and then this, you know, people, if you see them out, they have like a grocery bag. So they're just going yeah. out to do their shopping, but it's limited to now. You're required to wear the mask? Uh, or is this smart? Highly recommended. Um, okay. Cause here people, the masks are still rare here. Okay. No, everybody has them here. And how long have they had them there? Uh, I think it all... Oh, you haven't been out in two weeks. You don't I, know. <laughs> I haven't been yeah. out in three weeks, but um, about, like, since the official lockdown of Italy, I would say whatever okay. date that was, which that I... That was, I think, March 9th. Okay, since then. And we're every, talking, I don't even know what today is. It's March 22nd or something? Mm-hmm. So Who every... Knows? I don't know what day So is. there is, like, a shortage of masks, yeah, so people... 22nd. it's a, There's a shortage of masks, so people are making them. But everyone really has to, I mean, if you're going to the supermarket, like you have to have a mask, basically. I don't know if you would be, if there's a, um, like, if that's the law or not, but everybody has them. So then there was this gray area of where people were kind of, you know, told not to leave your house unless it's necessary for, you know, to get your groceries. But then people were out taking hikes and running yeah. and walking and you know, this caused like a real kind of tension and war. And then there's like the pro people who are saying, you know, what bad am I doing when no one else is around to go outside? And other people who are saying it's people like you, if we all run outside at the same time, right. it's not helping the problem. So we all just yeah. need to stay home. So some people are blaming the runners and the walkers that oh, that's geez. why this is being prolonged. Um, so finally, also part of, I think this new implementation of last night was that you know you can't go out anymore like gar parks are closed our mayor he like um boarded up the like running tr trails and like the pedestrian wow. walking areas they close them all off they don't want people exercising so like i have a video i can send you my neighbor was just like running back and forth on his balcony um, I was oh, really? Yeah, I was afraid to take my kids outside in the backyard. Uh, we live in a Why? we live in an apartment building, and so uh, you're really again you're not supposed to go outside unless it's a necessity. But um, even in your backyard, well, there's all these question marks, you know, like we don't know. And I went out with my kids the other day, and then got yelled at by a neighbor that we need to be inside. So. Yeah. I think so. Okay, so that gets to this. What's the mood? Is it getting tense? Has it been? Well, as you guys all saw in Italy, there was in the beginning there was this newfound like patriotism and singing from balconies and flash mobs and seemed like kind of positive in a way like we're gonna get through this. And then I think I'm trying to stay away from social media because it's just I think people are starting to lose their a little bit oh, and no, get a little singing on the balcony phase has passed i think so it's get people we're are, still singing on the balconies i mean okay yeah people like, are there was like, a guy we we're walking we did we can still go outside we went to a park yesterday day before and then on the walk back from the park there were people on their balcony like hey Aww. like your shirt oh that's nice and, you know it's like a little reminiscent of like people compared to 9-11 i wouldn't say it's as, no. like that as much as um like the blackout which happened a okay. few years later, and there was like then there was like this very communal vibe. Mm -hmm. um, I just I feel like um, there's like these gray areas, like I was telling you about, that are really dividing people. It's like right, it's left for interpretation. You know, there's a lot of people who are saying. So the the other big thing, what I was um, gonna say is that during this official lockdown of Italy, so we're not supposed to go outside unless we need to. But on the other hand, all the factories were open. So manufacturing was continuing. And so there are some people who think this keeps getting worse in Italy because all the factories are still open. And there's a lot of um, infected you know, workers from the factories. So we're doing our part by staying home. But as long as the factories are open, you know, it's, it's not going to help. So last night, they, the president decided to close the factories 
um, and also said that we can't go more than 200 meters outside of our houses. So like with the kids, I can, now I know that it's clear because there's a clear, you know, law now that right. I can go out to a certain point out in my backyard. Um, yeah. It's communal, so it always has to be like one person at a time. So if there's other kids that live in your building, like you right. can't be down there with them. So, yeah, I mean, I've been like, I've taken my kids down in the garage down underneath our apartment building and just made them like just run for like 10 minutes because it's, it, it's just getting tough, you know, every day. Yeah. How, how are they doing? Our guys, especially the older one, I think is having a hard time with it already. I, I mean, I feel like our older one, they understand it. Um, I think it really depends on our positivity and our moods. And so, of course, I have my little breakdowns once in a while, but I don't let them see it. And we try to make it fun. And I think they're fine. They're happy. And I think the hardest part is, you know, not being able to see their friends and but we do video calls and it seems like that helps a little bit. And I think the hardest part is just not having like an answer to be like, okay, we're all, you're going to go back to school next week. It's just kind of this mystery and that's yeah. what's hard. And I think as long as we try to keep them stimulated and um, in a routine, it's, it, they're really okay. I think it's more the adults who are, <laughs> you know, huh. Like, you know, have worries about your job. If you have to work at home and you have to entertain them, that's where it gets really hard. But are, are people still working? They're trying to work from home? Oh, yeah. They're like really into the hashtag calling it smart working. It's like the new most commonly used term. Wait, now. what's it called? Part working? Smart working. Oh, smart working. We're smart working. So everybody's smart working now. Oh, uh, okay. That's I haven't heard that one. And what define smart working for it's me? It's just it's just doing you know meetings from home and video okay. calls and yeah, not going to an office basically. Okay. So. Oh, so I want to make sure before we go and everything breaks and the kids barge in, the like core question for like this thing I'm trying to do is what's different this week than last week? Like, has anything changed in the last week or two weeks? I mean, yes, because the numbers, unfortunately, are not in our favor. There's more and more deaths. It's, it's still peaking. Uh, we hope it's peaking <laughs> right now. Um, so last night, uh, like I said, the president had to even take further steps to make people take it seriously, stay at home, close the factories. So they're closing the factories until April 3rd. And I think the, the idea is to see if you know, we can flatten that, the curve by keeping the, the workers at home now too. So yeah, it's scary that you guys are a couple weeks ahead of us and you still haven't seen the flattening. Like I think by far the worst days have been your last few days. Yeah. I mean, it's, it is, it's scary. Um, it's just popping up everywhere and you know, it, it, the incubation, incubation period, as you know, is like 14 days. So right. Yeah, that also means you don't know if what you've done the last two weeks has worked. Yeah. Well, we actually had a little scare with Nico because he had two bouts of pneumonia, did three cycles, three rounds of antibiotics with no improvement. And how, how was it? That's awful. But how was it getting care? Were you able to um, things overrun or not? No, it was the opposite. So I think, you know, having a... Um, social health care system. I mean, like, people abuse it, obviously, like, for every little thing, they're going to the emergency rooms or the doctors. So they really made that clear from the beginning. Do not go to the emergency room to the doctor if you don't need it. It has to be something serious. So, um, you know, every the doctor's offices were empty. Uh, because really? This was how long ago? Um, this is probably even three weeks ago. Okay. Um, even well, a month ago. People are probably ago. also scared to go for other things because they're like, well, it's going to be at the office. I shouldn't go. Right. So I think, you know, people did take that part of it seriously. And so we had no problems, you know, calling our doctor and he said, come on in. And he had a, like a face mask on, like a shield over his eyes, a mask. Yeah. I've seen that get up. He yeah. had like the whole thing going on. And they freak uh, out the kids. Hmm. Did it freak out the kid? No, he was being funny about it. Like it was like okay. a, you know, 
Star Wars costume or something. Yeah, okay, yeah, it does have kind of a Star Wars look. On our last visit, if it wasn't better, if he, if he wasn't completely clear in his lungs, I would have asked for a test, and it would have been how, possible. How hard is it to get the test? Um, not that hard. Uh, I think it's hard to know. We don't really hear about that. In the beginning, it was easier, I believe, and now they might be running out. Um, or it might be harder because everything's just so, the hospitals are so overrun with people. Um, so I think it's getting to be similar to what I hear in the States. Like they're only going to test elderly people or someone who had a direct contact with somebody who is positive. Yeah. Yeah. Or people are really bad. Like we have a friend who had a kind of flu like symptoms and he went to the testing center that said he would get the test on the phone. And when he got there, they said, no, you're not nearly bad enough. Yeah, so I think... Um, okay, I hear, I hear some moaning in the back, so I don't want to keep you too much longer, but I, I am curious how you're getting food. If you haven't left the house, how are you getting food? Oh, groceries? no, that's the one exception. We can oh, so you go- are leaving for that. I, my husband is going because we're supposed to only go about once a week. Okay. That's the suggestion because people are going out for like one or two things every day and that's not yeah. helping the problem. So he's, he's the bigger muscle man. He can go load up on stuff, so I'm staying with the kids um but we're we have plenty of food and italians love to cook so we're joking yeah. that we don't have a shortage of toilet paper like you do in the u.s but we have a shortage of uh yeast packets for baking like constantly bread no yeast yeah yeast bread pasta all that stuff um, yeah flour is a little hard to come by here okay yeah so you know food and i think there's still like the italians like my in-laws um we go get food from them. I don't know if that's legal or not, but they uh, have like these freezers full of all these, you know, prepared foods that they make throughout the year and all those jarred canned foods. Like the Italians still have that mentality of, you know, uh, not wasting anything, freezing homemade foods. So it's, we're fine. Food is not a problem here at all. What What is the biggest problem? Um... People like me and the people like my husband and I who have our own business licenses and we have no help right now from the government or we're with, okay. you know, that's, that seems to be the problem. But I think... So they're, they're paying like good unemployment benefits for people who are unemployed? They may eventually. Um, they had said something about people who have business licenses that they'll give us 500 euros here and there, every once in a while, ra- kind of randomly to different businesses. But that's not going to help anybody. They're postponing, obviously, you know, if you can't pay your bills, it's acceptable. Um, the banks are open, but uh, I think there's more paid leave, you know, paid sick leave here in Italy. So um, uh, I'm just about done. My battery's about okay. to die and I'll lose the whole recording if it does. So okay. let me go plug it in very quickly. So I successfully left, but never really returned. Uh, The kids barged in my room and her room. It kind of turned into romper room. uh, And that was the end of the conversation. But it's worth noting that when we spoke, uh, March 22nd was basically the height, the worst moment for coronavirus in Italy. Their uh, day with the most new cases was the day before, March 21st. And since then, they seem to have have been bending the curve uh, down, which of course is very good news for them. Uh, I think this is where I'm supposed to promote uh, the podcast, but I know nothing about podcasting. I've been much too busy watching uh, these two little kids to, uh, to learn much other than to just kind of get this out there. Uh, but the fact that you've made it this far indicates that somehow you're, you're watching or listening, which we appreciate. The plan is uh, every week uh, we're going to put one of these out. Next week will be uh, a conversation I had uh, with South Korea. Uh, They're also about two weeks uh, ahead of us, and we'll hear what life was like for them in week seven next week. Until then, thanks for clicking us on. Stay well in there.